Hello everyone, this is Dr. Lennon, and I want to walk you through uh, number three on the chapter 10 assignment. It's uh, probably the most complicated one just because there's such a variety of costs. The spreadsheet model isn't really that difficult, there's just a lot going on. So uh, we see that we've got this problem and we want to calculate the profit um, based on this conference. And this conference has two fixed costs, 150 for uh, a rental of the auditorium and $2,400 for three speakers. And then there's uh, a variety of variable costs. And in the problem, they tell you that uh, basically everyone that registers, uh, the Center for Business Analytics is going to incur a cost of $850 per person. Um, and parking, uh, so, so actually registration processing is going to occur for everybody that registers. And also, um, same for food. Food is prepared based on the number of people that registered. And the... Parking is only based on those that attend. So we have some numbers. We have two kinds of people. We have members and non-members, and the members get in free. So there are five of these uh, members, or there's 10 of these members that get five free seats each. So there will be 50 members that uh, aren't paying anything. And then there are 127 non-members. And these 127 non-members are the ones that actually pay for the conference, and they pay $75 a piece. And there are two uh, numbers that uh, basically tell us how we can project attendance. Historically, 25% of the 50 members don't show up, and 10% of the 127 non-members don't show up. So I basically copied all this into a spreadsheet in a variety of ways. So uh, we've got the rental and the speaker, so these two numbers. Um, I add them together to get the fixed costs. Then the food cost per person, they prepare the breakfast and lunch based on the number of people. They don't change it. So I added those together. So the food costs are $11 per person. The parking is $5 per person. And then the registration is $8.50 per person. Um, and again, we have the 50 members, the 127 non-members. So the total attendance, uh, the sum of these is 177. So the first thing we want to do is get the projected attendance. So what I did is I did... Um, I did 0.9, the number, the 90% of the non-members should attend, so 90% times this B13 cell, plus 75% of the members from the B12 cell. So that gives me a projected attendance of 151.8. So then what we want to do is calculate the revenue and then subtract off all the costs. So the registration revenue, we get $75 times the number of non-members, 127. And then we want to subtract all of the costs. So the simple costs to figure out are the food cost. The food cost is just the total number of people, the 177B14 cell, times the food cost per person, which is the B6 cell at 11. And then uh, the registration cost is also for the entire number of people that attend. So that's B14, the 177, times B10, the registration cost, 850 per person. And the parking, though, the parking is not based on the number that register, it's only based on the number that attend. So we take B17 times B8 when we're doing the parking cost, the 151.8 times the 5. Um, Okay, so now we've got all those costs. The only one that we haven't talked about is the projected refund. So what they say is um, basically the those that do not attend that paid will receive a refund of half. So what does that mean? That means the projected refund is another cost. We've got a half or 0.5 times the $75, the cost of registration, and based on the number that are not going to show. Now remember, the only people that paid are the non-members, and only 10% of them are not showing. So what I did was I did half times 75, so half the cost, times the 10% times the number of non-members that there are. So this is half times 75, and then 10% of the 127 we project won't show. So that, <clears throat> that gives me the projected refund cost. <coughs> okay, so now once we have these in order, we can calculate the profit. So essentially the profit is going to be this cell. So let me give it a background color. Um, let's give it a background color. I don't know if, uh, oh yeah, let's say light blue. 
and then so it's that one and then it's going to be minus all the costs so the cost let's uh, give those a background color of red maybe that's too red so we have the fixed costs we have the refund that's also a cost we have the food costs we have the parking costs and we have the registration costs so if you take the blue cell and subtract all the red cells then you'll get the profit right here so this is the profit that we're looking for so that gives us our uh, bottom line so notice and in there that's exactly what I have uh, if I click the cell I have B19 the blue cell minus B20 minus B22 minus B24 minus B4 the fixed cost and minus B26 the registration cost so that gives me 288 uh, $2,288.25 and uh, I checked this just a second ago but let me put it in there one more time so there we go we have the 2288.25 and uh, what they want us now to do is do a two-way data table to show how the profit changes as a function of non-members and no-show percentage of non-members. So basically, we want to have the registrants on one part and the, um, uh, and the percentage of no-shows. Okay, so what we want to do is, let's go back to our table, let's make a... Uh, Let's do the percentage of no-shows. I can't remember what they said. They said uh, uh, 10 to 30 in increments of 0.2. So 0 0.10, 0 0.12, 0 0.14, 0 0.16. And then we want to do this until we get um, up to 30. So 10% to 30%. So that's the percentage of no-shows. So percent no show um, let's make this a little wider and then down here we want the uh, number of non-members so the number of non-members um, so we go from 80 to 160 in increments of 5 so 80 85 90 95 and we want to go to 160 so you highlight the pattern and then you break it down till we get to 160 okay so now we want to fill in the table so when we fill in a two-way data table what we want to do is we want to um, put the uh, formula here based on some uh, <clears throat> um, some changing things so ours is based on the non-member and then the total registered so let's see if we can just do that based on the profit um, so the profit let's see let's see if I can copy this formula up here because this is the the formula that we're using essentially uh, I want to undo that action so I just wanted to copy this formula okay okay Let's go to another cell. Let's go to this cell. Now let's paste it. Um, okay, so there we go. So that's the profit, but what is that based on? It's based on the number of non members. So the changing column would be the non members, this one, and then the changing row is based on the percent uh, registered, which. Um, Okay, if I want to make this work, what I've got to do is I've got to include this number as a variable here. So um, that affects the uh, projected attendance, right? So um, to kind of uh, do that, let's do the percentage no-show. And I think that's only changing for the non-members. Let's have a look. Um, percentage non-member no-shows, yes. So um, notice... What is that affecting in uh, our table? Well, uh, it's going to uh, affect the projected attendance. So let's insert a row here. So we'll do uh, projected non-member no-show. So um, currently, we expected that to be 0.1 in our original formula. So when we did the projected attendance, this 0.9, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that to 
one minus the projected non-member no-show. So notice that's effectively still 0.9, but when I make this two-way table, it will change that for me. So we still get 151.8. And then I'm just wondering, did the thing come up anywhere else? I don't think I used the 0.9 anywhere else. Oh, I did right here, actually, the percent no-show and the projected refund. So I want to get rid of that 0.1, and instead I want to put the projected non-member no-show. Okay, so that is still 476.25. And in any of these other red or blue cells, I don't think I had that 0.9 or 0.1 number anywhere else. So, okay, so now I can uh, do the two-way table. So what I want to do is I think I highlight the whole selection. Oh, I inserted a row. I wondered what happened here. Um, let's delete this. Shift the cells up, yeah. So what we want to do is we want to highlight this whole thing. And we want to, um, so what if analysis? Yeah, so data, what if analysis, and then we do data table. And the row input cell, so the row input is the percent no show. So uh, let me slide this back over. The percent no show was this cell in our formula. And the column input is the number of non members, which is this one right here. So then we hit OK. And it populates the, uh, the values for us. So let's see what they asked for uh, on the MindTap assignment. They asked for uh, use a two-way table to show how profit changes. Um, in which interval of non-members does the break-even occur uh, for 22%? So at 22% break-even changes, right? It changes when we go from 85 non-members to 90 non-members. So 85 to 90 should be the correct answer there. So uh, 85 to 90 is 3, I believe. So let's check that. Okay, and we got it right. So um, the, the main thing when we're doing this two-way data table is <clears throat> uh, the two things that changed are the 0.1 and the number of non-members. So because I was just using 0.1 in the formulas, what I had to do was I had to slightly change all the cells that were affected by it by having a possible changing cell containing the number rather than just including the point 0.1 in the formula. So that's why I added this projected non-member when I'm creating the two-way data table versus when I'm just calculating a single value of a profit. So this will populate the entire matrix for us. And uh, these are the values that corresponds to the profits in each of the uh, in each of the respective uh, percentage of no-shows versus non-members. So hopefully that helped and uh, good luck on the assignment.